Hi, I'm Adam from EnglishAcon.com and in this video we're going to look at web storage found in Construct 2. Now if we open up Construct 2 and get a new empty project up and going, we'll start from there. So first, firstly let's see how we can include web storage into our game. What I did there, I'll click on Cancel just to show you, I double clicked or right clicked and clicked on Insert New Object, then I selected Web Storage and clicked on Insert. Now it's inserted. Now you can only insert one web storage um, object because that's all uh, you need and it's, it deals with your storage of information from your game locally in your internet browser. Now you can rename your storage so I can call this web storage 2 if I wanted to and then it's renamed here for me to use in the editor um, but I can't give it any of the variables or put it in a container like I can with other objects. Now web storage um, has the ability to, to store your game data both um, locally and you can either use that, sorry, and you can either, it can either persist, i.e. E., you can store it locally and it will, will remain there for several sessions or unlimited sessions that a user uses. That is to say, if you were to store your game locally, then the user closes their internet browser or whatever they're using and then a few weeks later they go back onto the domain where the game was and they play your game, that information can be recovered. Alternatively, you can store information locally until the session ends, that means until the user closes their internet browser and then that information is lost. Uh, and that information, however, if you do ask to store the information uh, in a persistent way, that information can be removed if the user clears their cache or deletes all that offline content. Because um, and that's the other thing as well, web storage can be used to save information offline so that you can play the games offline as well. Uh, it works with both Node WebKit as well as mobile wrappers um, and it does not store the information in the browser cache so it's not deleted unless all the cookies and on offline data are deleted. Uh, one thing to note with web storage is that if you have a game um, and it's on a particular domain, uh, domain then information is stored on that domain so that domain um, can, if you have several games you can access the information stored on that game with the web storage although they may be in two different games but the same game is unable to access the same information on if it's run on two different domains so web storage is domain related uh, it has a limit of five megabytes which is set by the internet uh, browser providers um, and if you access that there is a condition um, that flares up with web storage which you can check which is on quota exceeded uh, and it's a trigger and uh, you'll have to check it uh, to see whether there is enough room for you to actually store web uh, information otherwise it won't okay um, now this the in the key sorry the information that's stored in a web storage uh, object is similar to a dictionary object in that you store both keys and values in the form of strings and you can use those to pull out information or to save information and so if we go into the event sheet go double click and go to system scroll down to start of layout go to add action go to web storage we're going to set a local value and we click on set local value and this is going to store our first local value and we're going to call the key I don't know like let's call it curry and the value we're going to store is house. Isn't that cool? And so we've stored our first key and this is going to be persistent now. Um, so the start of layout we're going to store this. Now I'm going to go to layout 1 and then double click and I'm going to include the browser uh, object. Go back to event sheet and I'm using that so I can so I can actually show you what's being stored. I'm going to click on add action, I'm going to go to browser and I'm going to go to alert and then I'm going to alert the message, go to web storage 2 so I make sure that's selected and I'm going to go to the local value uh, get the value from a key in storage and the key I want is called and it's a string it's called curry and so that should alert uh, me the string found in the key curry which is house so hopefully that's going to work there we go it's alerted me with this alert box the string house before starting because this is within the start of layout. Now there are other things you can do, you can clear the storage so remove all local keys and then you can set the local key curry to house, let's see. So we remove all the keys and then we set the 
um, key to house, that's correct. Uh, we can also, if I double click on set local key and go to back, instead of clicking, oh sorry, I can cancel, ignore that. If I go to alert web storage 2, get rid of that, come across here to web storage 2, instead of going to local value at the storage, I can also um, get a value, so for example the local at, get the value stored at the nth key and I'm going to look at the first key which is zero base which is zero and see what this returns and so this returns house I did this video before <coughs> and because I didn't clear the local storage I had all manner of strange uh, <laughs> data coming out because it stores this data locally and you can actually use different programs to access this data okay um, so there are other things I can do, other actions I can do to web storage too. So I can clear the local storage, I can load a JSON string data. So if you imagine I actually create my game, I save that data to the dictionary object, I then export the dictionary in the form of JSON uh, to a variable and then I send that variable and um, I can load web storage from a JSON uh, string such as that. I can also remove a key from the storage and remove it as not instead of clearing all of them I can just remove individually if I know the keys and I can set and if there's no key found when I set a key it adds the key which is why I didn't need to add new key. Uh, now with session this is local and local here refers to the persistence of um, the, the data so it stays there until the user deletes the cache and the cookies and their offline content from their web browser otherwise it the data remains in a persistent form so whatever I set will remain there technically forever um, unless I choose session so set session value so I'm going to call this session curry Oops, curry and or perhaps I should make it a bit easier for myself and just use s curry and the value will be s house a session house done and so I'm just going to put that before my browser and I'm going to alert what value is at the second key position so local at key position one which is nothing interestingly zero let's see so house but for some reason it's oh sorry that's because if you notice it says local app and I've only set one local key if I go back um, sorry if I select that delete that come back to the web storage I can get the session keys as well so get the session value from a key and the key is session curry and that's also a string so click on play and then s house comes back so it's, it's worth noting the difference between session and local local is the persistent form and session is the temporary one until your web browser is closed but you reference them both individually so if I click on add action, go to web storage, there's both the local up here and the session here. And they're very similar. So clear session storage is the same as clear local storage. Remove session values the same as remove local value and set session values the same as set local value. <coughs> now I can double click and there are some conditions that come with web storage. For example, compare key. So this is again, this is the local keys. I can compare the key value as a number and um, I'm not sure if you just saw that but this disappeared for some reason okay so I'm not going to mouse over so compare the key value as a number so retrieve the value of a key as a number and then compare it or retrieve the value as text and then um, compare it so because you're storing all of your values as a string even if they're numbers so if I type in numbers 222 two, two, that actually is referenced as a string um, 
So if I change this to 333 and then run this again, then I should have 333 pop up. It looks like it's a number, but this actually returns as a string. Therefore, when you add a new um, event and you look for a condition, and you want to compare the, the, the value at that key, if you know it's a number, then you want to compare it as a number, and if you know it's a string, you want to compare it as a string. And let's say we compare the key, which is, um, one second, this is local, we compare the key, which is just called curry, and if it's equal to 2222, which it is, then we can set the background color to something quite funky. Oops, lazy me. There. So that should be true. There we go. Horrible sickly color again. Okay, and if the curry is just compared uh, as a number, but as you can remember, if you compare it as a text, which keeps on disappearing, and the key is curry, we we'll ignore the case, and we're going to compare. Let's see what happens. Just delete that. Will the background change? Yes, it has as well, because technically um, this is in the form of a string, and so it's already in the form of the string. But if we wanted to compare it as a number, we have to convert it into a number to use. Anyway, um, there are other conditions such as session key exists, so we can check if there's a session key there, and the key could be called something like s curry. Oops, so just s curry. And so if this exists, if it's true, then we follow through and do the action, like delete, clear, storage, or whatever. The other conditions we can check for on quota exceeded and the description reads triggered when the browser's limitations on how much data can be stored are exceeded so if it's exceeded we could actually clear the local storage clear the session storage and that deletes it that's an example as to how you can use that now of course by a system compared to values I can actually take out some of these values as I've shown before some of these expressions so I can look for the key at a certain point let's go through all of these I can look for the JSON which has returned uh, the contents of all local storage in the form of a JSON format so that will be text uh, similar to uh, an array display in JavaScript and you can use that to then take out the values that you needed to or transfer the web storage from one place to another. Um, you can get the values stored at the nth local key and the keys are stored in a zero base index like an array in JavaScript would be so key 0 would be the first key uh, in this case key 0 for us would be curry and so the value would be 2222 two, two, two. Um, get the number of keys in the local storage we've only got two in the local storage and one in the session um, get the nth local keys name so we can get the key name so if you wanted to look for uh, position 0 which is the first one we can actually retrieve the key name um, we can also look for the local value, um, get the value for the key in the local storage so if you wanted to compare the key with something else and the same is true for the session but just for the session data so there's um, a duplication, not a duplication, but there's two so two types of data but they basically do the same sort of things um, so they're the main things with uh, the web storage and you can, uh, the other thing to, to point out is that you can actually find, you can actually use two programs to access <coughs> the web storage. So, for example, if I run this again, and so I'm actually setting keys, and then I come to project, right click and close, don't save, go to file, go to new, go to empty project. Oh, my double click's not working because I'm using a pen. Um, come back to here, in, double click, come on, include web storage, include browser, go to event sheet, double click, go to system, go down to on startup layout, go to alert, so I go to browsing it to alert and we're going to look from web storage and we're going to look at the local, sorry, the local value stored at key zero 
let's see what that is it's 2222 two, 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 because it still has the um, information of all the keys we stored from the original project so even though we have a new project technically a new game we can still access that web storage so you could actually pass data from one game to another game um, or send it off to a server or retrieve it to a server but keep it locally uh, within the browser if you want to allow your users to play the game offline. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video I hope it's been informative um, uh, if you like the video or you ha if you have any questions please uh, leave them in the comments thank you very much